welcome back. We are on this brand new series on the army of God, right? We are going to learn kids about some amazing warriors who are in the Bible, right? Are you ready? I hope you've got all your stuff ready, right? Attention kids, we are going to learn more about the army of God. And guess what? Aladin, Aladante has got himself recruited in the army, right? I don't know what he's going to do. Is he going to cook or is he going to be an army? We better stay tuned and watch what Aladante is going to do, right? I heard he sent me a letter that he's joined the army to learn some things there as well. So let's go have a look what Aladante is up to. We don't know, right? I am hope I'm going to catch him and see what he's up to. So kids, get ready. We are on this brand new series on the army of God and be blessed. I will catch you around. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's against the powers of this dark world. I'm a Therefore, put on the full armor of God. So you can stand your ground. I'm a soldier.
Oh, hindi boys and girls. Uh, I started joining the army to do some uh, training, but uh, I don't know. They were having a drill exercise. Uh, they left us here in the jungle, and we are supposed to find our way back to the base camp. And uh, I don't know. I got very tired, and I I lied my head for a little while, and everyone was gone. And then I don't know where they went. And now I'm trying to find my way back to base camp. But I have no idea where they've gone. I don't know. This is too tiring for me. It is all because of my brother. You see, my brother said that uh, they uh, wanted to uh, do something about the army and for me to go and check it out and see. Uh, but, uh, but I don't know. I'm finding it so difficult, boys and girls. This is very hard, you know. And I'm having a knee problem as well. I knocked my knee at one of the uh, training exercises they were doing. And uh, I hope I find my way back to the base camp. Uh, you know, boys and girls, uh, which way do you think they went? Uh, uh, can you hear their voices at least? I'm trying to picture to hear their voices, but they can't hear anything. Uh, do you know where they go? It's like, oh, there are mighty animals as well in the dark, you know. I don't know where they go anyway. Oh dear. Hey kids, how you doing? I'm Squirt the Clown. I'm here with today's old zing thing. That's when we take a thing and we put in some zing. Now kids, I'm hiding today. I'm hiding from the quarterback. He's here somewhere. He's been following me around all day. He hates it when I use the word b Oof. I almost said it, kids. He thinks it's his word. It's the last half of his name. I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about this on the yeah, 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 you guys know what I'm saying. If I, if I use that word, if I use the word he's not gonna be happy. I'm hiding from him, just like in the Bible, kids. There was a guy in the Bible, his name was old Gideon, and he was hiding because he was afraid, kids. And uh, he, he was hiding, and he was in the wine all the press, and he had all these, all, all the wheat, and he was hitting it to hook out all the stuff because he was afraid of all, all, all the bad guys. and. And, uh, and yeah, I'm just, I'm just really nervous, kids. Because if he gets in here and I use the word, oh, 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 I almost said it again. He's not gonna be happy. All right. Well, I might head back to the, to the thing. That's my word, kids. I'm the quarterback, and that is the same thing. Hey kids, welcome back to Creative Time. Thank you so much for sending in some amazing things we've had come in this week. Right kids, you've taken some uh, new things. We've got some new ones that have come in as well. Beautifully done. Okay, let's have a look. <coughs> All right, first we've got uh, Daria and Nicholas. Both have come in together this time. A beautiful picture, Daria, you've done of week one, week two, week three, and week four. Beautifully done about recognize, resist, run, and repeat. I love it. So beautiful, nicely, beautiful colors, beautifully illustrated. I love that uh, picture, Daria. Beautifully done. Thank you so much. And Mr. Nicholas, wow, you've done a beautiful random Bible verse box and you've got Esther 10.3. Okay, can you say Esther 10.3 now? Oh, come on, you can't laugh. You've got to tell it, okay? I'm <laughs> just joking. Beautifully done, Nicholas. Uh, beautiful. A Bible verse box that you've done. I love the initiative of yes, studying the memory verses and studying some Bible verses, which is really good. Beautifully done. Thank you so much, kids. Okay, next we've got Joanna. Joanna, a beautiful one about the temptation, right? To make the stone into bread and no, and it's so hot. And yes, you've got the nice mountains and beautiful illustrated Joanna. I love it. Thank you so much. There are some bones as well. I don't know which animal has died and left some bones there. Okay. And next we've got Joel. Wow, Joel, beautifully done. 
a nice one about the stone man shall not live by bread alone and then the earthly thing 50% off the free no we shouldn't do that look to god they exactly the cartoon we saw about the cookies right and sometimes sometimes you can get you know buy one get one free right and the enemy always has that beautifully done and he's done a beautiful cross on saying which to say no and which is correct beautifully done joel i love it thank you so much and next we've got Kaya, Kaya, oh, first time you've come on Creative Time. Welcome, thank you so much for sending in your beautiful creative thing on Temptation. Right, you've done 1 Corinthians 10, 13 and you've done the four R's. Yes, recognize, resist, run away and repeat. Beautifully done, Kaya. I love the uh, beautiful lettering of Temptation, the colors, the Bible verse and you've taken a, a bit of time to do that. Thank you so much. Beautifully done, Kaya. And we've got Sienna. Wow, Sienna, you've done a beautiful drawing as well with the, the verse, right? Yes, you've done the verse and you've drawn a bit of an image. Me, chocolate. <laughs> Satan is tempting you chocolate. You love chocolate, Sienna? I love chocolate too, okay? <laughs> it's great. And you say, no. <laughs> and you find the exit door. <laughs> or oh, Is that the fridge? Okay. <laughs> Beautifully done. Beautifully illustrated. I love that drawing. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. And next we've got Javan. Wow, Javan, beautifully done. Being a Christian, being, be a happy times. Yeah, yeah, right. Yes, and you've got no, 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 no. Yes, the enemy trying to tempt you in a lot of things and you're saying no, 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 no. Yes, beautifully done, Javan. Beautiful drawing and thank you so, so much. Beautifully done. And next we've got Saraya. Saraya's beautiful drawing. I'm trying to read this. Let me see what is done. She's got a beautiful... Uh, but I have a bit of a cough. Oh, you're tempted to have some ice cream again. Ice cream like last week, okay? I think you like ice cream, Soraya, okay? Okay, so we, we, we both need to go on an ice cream date, right? So we have this where the, oh yes, the ice cream truck comes and Soraya's like, no, I have a bit of a cough and no, but yes, finally she says, she gives, does not give into it, which is beautifully done, Soraya. Beautiful little story you've done about saying no to temptation. I love it, beautiful. Thank you so much. Wow, we've got Caitlin. Oh, hey. Welcome to the show, Caitlin. Uh, beautifully done. 1 Corinthians 10, uh, 13, she's done that. And she's done a beautiful with the hearts and everything. And she's done some really cut out hearts and she's done the Bible verse. Beautifully done, Caitlin. Thank you so much. I'm so looking forward to seeing more from you coming to Creative Time, right? Thank you so much. Yes, and uh, that's all we've got for this week. So kids, thank you for sending in your drawings. I'm missing quite a few of some of our regulars who used to send us but then randomly suddenly they just drop off right you've got time at home right do a little thing do some creative do the bible verse the pulse anything send it over to creative time we would love to showcast it right? looking forward to seeing more of your stuff catch you around run, 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 run. So, what have we got next? Uh, Mr. Director, sir, it's the uh, clown with the ram. Oh, the clown with the ram? Yeah. Oh, the ram. Yeah. Okay, it's, uh, it's, uh, and which clown have we got? It's, uh, it's not Boingo, is it? Uh, oh, uh, no, sorry. I could... like Boingo. Right. Boingo uh, makes me laugh. Uh, we, we, unfortunately, we couldn't get Boingo, uh, no, this time. No, boi no Boingo? No. Oh, was... that's a shame. It's not, uh, it's not, it's not, uh, Zippy, is it? I like Zippy. Well, I, I, Zippy. I, I did leave messages for Zippy. He didn't return our calls. Oh, that's a shame. Never mind. It's not, uh, it's not, uh, it's not Kajanga Glang, is it? Kajanga Glang. I, I like Kajanga Glang. He's uh, a different kind of funny, but still funny nonetheless. Yes, he's very good, yes. Mr. Director. But uh, yes. Kajanga Glang's actually overseas at the moment. Kajanga Glang. Oh. Yes. Is there anyone in the country? Is there any, who, who did we get then? Well, uh, we got... Pico, sir. Pico. Pico. The green hair guy. Yes. The guy that never remembers the ram. Uh, yes. You know, uh, Zippy's that's... good at rams. You yeah. know, Zippy remembers rams. And so does Kajanga Glang. Right. Boingo. <laughs> oh, even just thinking about Boingo makes me laugh. <laughs> makes me laugh. 
that other clown with the green hair. Hmm. All right, well, uh, let's wheel him out and let's get this show on the road then, shall we? Okay, guys, let's get this clown. Places, please. Places, please. Quiet on the set. Boxing mooses. Stop boxing, cat and mouse. Stop that. Panda with chopsticks. Get out of my face. Goldfish, stop swimming. Here we go. Eyes down. Ready? It's ram time. Ram, 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 ram. It's ram time, the random access memory, coming to you live from the studios of four. And here we are. It's week one. Pico and the ram on the army. Let's roll them! Hi, boys and girls, Pico the Clown here. I'm ready to teach you guys the rap. That's the random access memory. Um, here it goes. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty arm. For the beetle is not yours, but God's. Second Chronicles 2015. Okay. That's okay. the rap. Uh, yeah, hi Pico. Hi, how you going Mr. Director? Yes, yeah, going well. It's well, been I a was... long time. Yeah, well, it's been a long time. There's a good reason for that. Yeah, look, I've been well. I was well. Right. Uh, look, fella, I'm, uh, I, 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 I think I heard you say arm. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty arm. Yes, my gun show. My, my muscular arm show of a gun. <laughs> but, do you like it? It's like a cannon, man. It's like, you know, I've been like working out and stuff. Lifting things. You've been working out, have you? Yeah. Oh, I see. And what, so, what have you been lifting? Well, um, I tried to lift an elephant. Yes. But it didn't work. He just sat down and grunted. Yes. Okay. Do um, but I have been lifting lots and lots of things. Like, um, apples. Yes. Yeah, I've been mean, lifting apples and also uh, mouses. Lots of mouses. And I've also lifted a dog. You lifted a dog? Yeah. Where did you lift him to? Where did I lift him to? Uh, above the fence. <clears throat> Climbed in. Okay, L so now listen. Listen, listen, fella, I'm going to help you out here. Right. Because you got it kind of close. This ram's not too long. 2 Chronicles 2015 says this. I'm going to bring the text up and I want you to have a look. Okay. On the bottom of the screen, mister. The bottom. Okay. Do not be afraid. Yes. Exclamation mark. Yes. Don't be discouraged by this mighty arm. Oh. E. Army. Um, E. Arm. Right. E. Y. Army. Um, E. Y. Okay. Um. Y. Army. Okay, up this, Mr. Director. Yes. I'm just confused about one little bit. What bit? Uh, the gun show. The, I can't see where that fits you, in. Yeah, it's not there, is it? No, nothing. It's... It never said arm, fella. It never did say arm. It says army. This whole no. thing's on. This whole thing's on the army. Did right. you think we were gonna put out a module of curriculum for the kiddies called Four on Arm? Wow, <laughs> that looks pretty good. We wouldn't do that, would we? That, that's pretty much how I saw it was gonna be. Yeah, no, it's not. That's amazing. Wow, you did a really good job with that. It's four on the army, fella. Right. Four on the army of God. Oh. This is week one. Right. You've got to get yourself so, in this shape, fella. Look at yourself. Yeah. And what what happened to your hair? Right. Your hair. You like it? No, I don't. Uh, uh, yeah, oh, oh, right. It's, what did you do to it? Not much. I, I just didn't cut it. I've been growing it. You've been, of, you've been growing your hair? Yeah, I figured like some people have great green thumbs and they grow things and I've got green hair, I should grow it. So I've been sitting down eating a lot of lentil burgers. Lentil burgers. Yeah. Well, they're certainly working. They've really kicked in. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, Work, look like, you look like some sort of hippie. Right. Now listen, man. It's yeah. the totally wrong look for the army. Oh. 
You've got to get yourself into shape, fella. Right. You've got to get yourself a haircut. Haircut. You've got to, you've got to suck in that stomach, soldier. Suck it in. Suck it in. <coughs> suck it in more. <coughs> really hoover it this time. <coughs> Come on. Come on. <coughs> Give me some more. <coughs> Squeeze it. Get that diaphragm off. <coughs> <laughs> Collapse the lungs! Now listen, fella. Right. Yes. I need you in an army soldier's outfit. Army soldier, right? I don't need you as a clown. Now I get it! Boingo would have known this. Right. So would Zippy. Right. I'm not even gonna mention Kachanga Glang. Right. They would know! Okay. If you're gonna do four on the army of God, fella, you've gotta come dressed as a soldier. Right. Get a haircut. Yes. Get long haired lout. Right. And come back here next week. Yes. With this RAM, 2 Chronicles 2015. And I want you to learn it right. No wrong words. Okay? Okie dokie. That so, sounds good. So why don't you head off to your barracks. Yes. And come back next week. Week 2 on the Army of God. And right. teach these kiddies the RAM. Okie dokie. The random access memory! Random access memory! Okay. I've got it! Alright. It's the army. Roger. I'm the silly. Alpha Charlie Foxtrot. He said, um, did you see that? Um. He said, don't be discouraged by this mighty arm. Can we can we try to get Kajanga Glang again? I know he said he's out the country, but maybe we can buy him a flight back. Because God was right by their side, they still won the battle. How awesome is that? Now let's go to today's pulse. Even when you're small, you can still see the enemy fall. That's just like Gideon. Even though he was small, he could still see that enemy fall when they won the victory. Now let's try these actions together. Even when you're small, that's right, so get yourself into a really small ball. Even when you're small, now for the next part, we're going to jump up as high as we can, then fall to the ground. Let's do it. You can still see the enemy fall. Fantastic! Now let's try it all together. Even when you're small, you can still see the enemy fall. That was awesome, kids. Now let's go girls versus boys. I wonder who's going to win. This time, I want you to use your loudest voice, your most fiercest voice, and I want you to give it your best shot. Here we go, girls. Even when you're small, you can still see the enemy fall. That was awesome. How about you, boys? Do you think you can do it? Let's go. Ready? One. Two, three, four. Even when you're small, you can still see the enemy fall. Wow, that was awesome. Now I wonder who won. Was it the girls or was it the boys? Whoa, that's great. All right, now let's try it one more time. All together, here we go. One, two, three, four. Even when you're small, you can still see the enemy fall. Well guys, you have done a great job. Well, I'm Genergy and this has been today's Pulse. Slapstick Theater, Gideon's 300 men. This is Gideon, hey. who was a judge of Israel. In the time when Gideon lived, a group of people called the Midianites were taking over the Israelites' land 
Get out of here! And the Israelites were starving. So the Israelites asked God for help. God chose Gideon to rescue the Israelites and gave him the power to lead an army of Israelites. One day, Gideon and his army got up early and came close to the Midianite camp. God told Gideon that he had too many warriors with him. Really? So God told Gideon to let all the men who were scared go home. All right, uh, you can go home. So 22,000 men went home, and Gideon was left with only 10,000. But God told Gideon that he still had too many men with him. Uh, what, really? He told Gideon to bring the men down to the water and that God would give them a test. Okay. Gideon did as God asked, and then God said, divide the men in two groups. In one group, put all those who cup water in their hands and lap it up with their tongues like dogs. In the other group, put those who kneel down and drink with their mouths in the stream. Only 300 men drank from their hands. God told Gideon, with these 300 men, I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites. Send all the others home. So Gideon did as God said. You can go home. That night, God told Gideon to get up and go down to the camp to listen to what the Midianites were saying. Hey, Pura, let's go. Gideon and his servant Pura went down to the camp and saw the huge army. There were too many men and camels for Gideon to even count. Oh, that's a lot of camels. But Gideon heard a soldier telling another man about a dream he had that showed them that God would give Gideon victory over the Midianites. When Gideon heard this, he worshipped God. Come on! Then Gideon and his army of 300 men went down to the Midianite camp. They blew their horns and held torches in their hands. They yelled out, and the Midianite soldiers rushed around in a panic and tried to escape. Then God caused the Midianites to start fighting against each other. Because of God's power, Gideon and his army had victory over the Midianites that day. Hey kids, welcome. I hope you enjoyed watching the previous uh, cartoons. I hope you enjoyed doing the songs. I hope you enjoyed Aladante going to training or trying to escape training, right? I don't know how he's going to handle the coming few weeks with these trainings, but I hopefully he comes through strong, okay? And so kids, I hope you watched the cartoon before about Gideon. I know we've learned about Gideon before as well. But today I want to share something very special with you, right? See, sometimes we think we are really small, very insignificant, right? Like it was in the pulse. Even if you are small, you can see the enemy fall, right? It's like that sometimes. You might think, hey, how come it says God is my health, God is everything. But sometimes we go through so many struggles. See, Gideon, he woke up on a normal day and said, it's a normal day, I'm going to thresh wheat, okay, it's a normal day, and he keeps going. But what happens? The Lord comes and turns it completely around. Imagine a simple guy, right? Not a, not a great physique guy, not a very strong guy, not a very, very popular guy as well. A simple guy who got up to do his day-to-day -day work, right? And what happens? God shows up. And what does it say? He wants Gideon to kill the Midianites. And he's like, how can I win? Look at me. I'm a young guy. I'm very small. I'm very timid. I'm very weak. And God wanted him to go and save Israel. That's crazy. Have you had these thoughts where suddenly God gives you something to do and you're like, wow, it's way too big for me. Right? But if you see in that, if you look at Judges in Judges chapter... Six, right? If you turn to Judges chapter six, we see the story about Gideon, right? A beautiful story. And Gideon is one of my favorite Bible characters. I love Gideon, right? Because why? He was a simple guy. And God uses simple people, right? Maybe you're looking at yourself and saying, hey, I, I'm nothing. I'm not the captain of the cricket team. I'm not a captain of the basketball team. I'm not much into sport. I'm not the smartest kid in the class. I'm not the greatest. Uh, person who can speak really well you may be thinking all these things 
But you know what? God still can use you. Because God doesn't look at all of all those things. What does God see mainly? He sees your heart. If your heart is there to serve God, that is all what God looks for. Right? And I'm sure Gideon had that heart. Right? Because if you look at chapter 6, if you look at verse 14, this is the verse. I love this verse. Because it says, The Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. Wow, that is crazy. Can you read that again? Say, go with the strength I will give you. Does it say that? No, go with the strength you have. That means each of us have a strength inside of us. And what does God want us to do? God wants us to use that strength. Because when we use that strength, God amplifies it. We've got to use what we have first. You remember in Moses' story, what did he have? He only had a staff. Use that. God amplified it and did so many miracles with just that one staff. God asked Moses, what do you have in your hand? He said, a staff, a stick. That was it. But God used it. God will amplify what you have if you're willing to use it for God. And what happened? Gideon had how many? 32,000 men. Okay, we are going to fight. And all these men came and joined Gideon to fight the Midianites. But what did God say? You know, God God has a real crazy way of working, right? He said, ah, you've got too many. Too many? They've got about 300,000. I have only 32,000. No, you've got too many. And what did he say? Gideon asked, okay, if any of you want to quit, you don't want to do it, you can go home. And what happened? Not 10, not 20, 22,000 army left. Do the calculation from 32,000, you minus 22,000, how much has he got left? He's got only 10,000. And with that 10,000, now it's reduced so much, less than even half. And Gideon's like, okay, this is going to be hard. How are we going to do this? I don't know. God says, what? You still got too many. What? You got to be kidding me. God, are are you seeing things the way I'm seeing? Have you got your numbers mixed up? Maybe you didn't go for maths class, God. This is impossible. (laughs) God says, still you got too many. Take them to the river to drink. God, Gideon did it. And he said, finally he chose. There were two types. Those who bent down on their knees and drink the water. And those who started drinking with their hand, God said, you know what? Take those who started kneeling down and lapping like a dog. And there was left with only 300 of them. From 32,000, God brought Gideon's army to 300. A minority, an insignificant number to what the Midianites had. But still, they won the battle. Humanly calculating, strategizing it, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible, kids. The battle belongs to God. It does not belong to you. It does not belong to me. The battle belongs to God. What is the greatest battle you're facing today? Maybe it's your studies. Maybe it's your report card. However much you try, you never get good grades. How much you want to impress your teacher, your parents, you're finding it very difficult to do it. You always get into trouble. Maybe it's a battle for you. Maybe every time you get synced into doing the wrong thing, listening to the wrong words, listening to the wrong music, getting into the, un- getting into the wrong stuff online. Maybe that's where your battle is. But the battle is God's. If you hand it over to God. And you know what the greatest thing, why did Gideon, you ever wonder why Gideon won all this? He was obedient. See, obedience is a very crucial thing, kids. Obedience is a crucial thing to God. When Gideon obeyed every instruction that God gave, maybe he didn't understand it. Maybe he was so worried about it. Imagine that. From 32,000, 22,000, 300. Logically, it is impossible to win that battle. But Gideon just obeyed God. He didn't question it. Maybe in his mind he was questioning, but he didn't question God. He just obeyed. Because of his obedience, he won the battle. 
And you know, kids, if you want to win your battles, you need to obey what the Holy Spirit is telling you today. Because the Spirit of God came upon Gideon. Because why? He was going to use the strength that he had. Are you willing to use the strength that you have? If you are willing to do that, God's Spirit will start coming upon you and He will amplify that so that you can win your battles. You may think you're very small, you may think you're very insignificant, but you know what? God uses and loves people like that. He uses people like that to be His warriors. This entire series on what we're going to learn is on how God uses some great warriors in the Bible, but we always thought they were very insignificant. They were very small. Right? It's like this time's worse in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. What does it say? He said, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is not yours, but God's. Maybe you're having a hard to find friends. Maybe you struggle to have friends. You see others having so many friends, so many clicks happening. And you want to be a part of it, but they don't, they don't accept you. Maybe that's a great battle for you, not having much friends. And then you try to change your life to suit them. And that messes you up. Don't go there, kids. Don't go there. Hold strong to what God has for you. Hold strong to the faith God has given you. Hold strong to the truth of God's word. That battle will be won. Take that battle to God. Give that battle over to God. Whatever your battle is today, you're facing today. Whatever the battle is you're facing today, will you take that out right now? Will you bring that to memory right now? Will you close your eyes with me? Whatever that battle is you're facing, maybe you've been facing it for a long time. Maybe it's loneliness. Maybe it is hurt from what your friends did, from what your parents did, for whatever has taken place in your family. There's something that has happened. Maybe you're facing a battle in front of you, but you put on a good face, but inside there's a massive battle that is going on. I want you to bring that to memory right now. Close your eyes. And I want you to picture taking that in your two hands and just giving it to God. Would you just picture that in your head? Or say, Heavenly Father, I pray for every child right now. Whatever battle they're facing, Lord, today, God, I pray that you will bring about a victory like you brought about a victory in Gideon, Father. God, I pray victory for every battle to every child that is watching right now. Through the screens, God, I pray for your spirit to go and lay upon them, Father God. Amplify their strength, Heavenly Father. Bring about a victory, Father God, to every child, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. So kids, live a victorious week this week. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. The battle is the Lord's. Right? Remember in your prayer every day, give those battles to God. He's going to do an amazing thing with you. Thank you kids for tuning in, watching. Hope to see you next week for another episode on the army of God. We are going to learn about another warrior of God next week. Stay tuned. I'll catch you around. You